economist Joelle Root, who is the chairman of the think tank The Bridge. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you very much for speaking to us on France 24. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, tell us if or perhaps when uh, this deal is agreed, how will that change the relationship between the European Union and China? Well, that's tremendous uh, change that can happen, and that's why, you know, it takes time. Uh, to put it in comparison, Americans uh, discuss trade with China. A trade agreement is something that can be negotiated, renegotiated, etc. An investment agreement is much more ambitious. It cannot be renegotiated. Once you've invested on one side or the other, the investment is there to last in the, in the other country. Not, we're not just talking about financial investment, but about physical investment, like factories, plants, you know, productive capacity capacities, investment in new technologies, common programs, and etc. So that can be very structuring on the long run. And any decision, any agreement we make today commits us, is binding for the next 10 years. So we can imagine anything from a, I would say, simple agreement that protects IP, that protects revenues, and that opens the market. It's already very difficult to negotiate, but it's not so ambitious up to something extremely ambitious where you want to offer the possibility to your most advanced companies to do uh, research, innovation, development of programs and markets together. So that can be very transformative. You heard me say, though, that for the EU there are real stumbling blocks ahead. What do you think the chances are we'll get this deal done by the end of the year? Well, uh, the trend is not like the bookmaker would predict, but we can say that uh, China needs a success uh, because China has lost the U.S. China has lost its kind of uh, privileged uh, relationship to the U.S. if you look back like two years ago and will not regain it and it knows that. So China cannot, cannot afford to lose the EU. That's one. For the EU, it's also a transformative moment. We've seen the, the, the new financial package, the Green Deal and etc. Uh, and the understanding that uh, uh, Europeans need to tie up to uh, develop, redevelop their, their industry. So there is an interest. Now, uh, I think a couple of things are on the way, uh, are blocking the way. First of all, IP is extremely important. Uh, uh, the Chinese seem to be giving good, uh, good signs of willingness on that. Uh, another aspect is the subsidies. I think the Europeans are understanding now that for the state-owned enterprises in the I would say the traditional economy, uh, nowadays the Chinese subsidies are more to reform, restructure, refurbish old companies rather than giving them an undue advantage. So there is some scope for negotiation. That. What might be blocking is the new sectors, the new industries, uh, not only uh, Chinese companies like Huawei gaining markets on Europe, but Europeans want, want, the, want the reverse. And the way markets are structured for the new technologies in China today is rather for call, through call for tenders at the municipal level, at the provincial level. And there, there is no financial advantage given to Chinese companies. But there is a way to frame the auctioning in a way that the Chinese technologies have an edge on that. And this is what uh, the Europeans want to dismantle. And in a sense, the discussion has become less political than a couple of years ago, more technical. So are the Chinese willing to move into those technicalities and give uh, you know, guarantees is something we're going to see uh, today. You say this has become less political, more technical. We have very little time, but I just want to ask you briefly, if you can, to what extent are human rights issues, uh, the situation in Hong Kong, what's happening with the Uyghur minority inside China, to what extent are those kinds of issues holding up the EU from signing this deal? Briefly, if you can. Frankly speaking, in this negotiation, I think next to nothing. It will be put on the table for sure. But again, we're discussing something which is if, if this agreement is signed, it's going to structure the next 10 to 20 years. So, uh, in a sense, the kind of time frame is more long term. And I think the, the two parts are able to uh, disentangle the discussions on the one hand, which are political, and those economic discussions. There will be influence based on that, but I think that the final uh, elements for clinching an agreement or not will be the technicalities of accessing the Chinese market for uh, uh, new technologies, European companies. All right. Joel Ruet, thank you very much for your uh, clear analysis uh, on uh, those talks taking place today between China uh, and the EU.